The residents of the small village of Marbit have always been dependent on livestock rearing. Traditionally, the men work in the fields and the women take care of the animals. Every morning, Alzafa al Subi helps her goats suckle their young. Some mothers need a bit of help to feed their offspring. So the herder makes sure every kid eats its fill. After suckling, she takes the adults to graze in the mountains. The agile animals climb the steep mountain slopes, where scrubby vegetation has taken hold. These scrubs and bushes are enough to sustain them for much of the year. This bush here is sweat. It's all dry now, but when it's green, it's very good for the goats. We call this the erbeb. This plant produces fruit that we sell at the market. The animals eat them with or without the flowers. It's good for their organism and their muscles. And it smells nice too. The goats spend the morning looking for tender leaves. Then they make their way home to the pen. We make sure they're all home. But none is missing or has got lost. If that were the case, I would miss them terribly. I'm very fond of them all. This one is called Akfuf. And that's Izalo. He's sad because his mother doesn't suckle him. And her name is Iloa. It means gentle, pretty. At the end of March, when spring arrives, the mountain vegetation does not provide enough nutrition for the goats. So as Alpha supplements their diet. Every day, the goats get a ration of sardines and nourishing dates. While the kids and the weakest adults feast on fresh fodder, picked by Alzalfa's brothers in the nearby oases. They give us dates, as do other people from the outside, and our close friends. They give us things, we give them things, we trade with them. We exchange produce or livestock, and they give us money, vegetables and other items. In Jebel Akhtar, farmers and breeders have cooperated since time immemorial. But meat and fodder are not the only things they trade. Another, more unusual commodity is also prized. Mohamed Al-Rawahi is an ecologist. For several years now, he has been studying the oasis soil with Andreas Burkett. You can see they have here uh, goats and sheep's manure. Yes. But in the other field, they have also cows. Cow manure. Cow manure, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Which, yeah, depending yeah. on where the resource is from, exactly. whether they get it from the Jabali or, or, or from, from here. From here. You can see from the soil how it's uh, fertile, from even the color, and you can see the amount of the manure that they applied here in, the, in this village, especially. They applied a lot of manure, and that will increase, you know, 
the organic uh, carbon in the, in the soil. But the carbon, especially the carbon, is important for this, uh, the macrofauna, like the worm and also the microorganisms, so they can do their job for mineralize the organic matter so the plants can uptake it. Nothing goes to waste in Jebel Akhtar. From neighboring farms, nutrient-rich manure is used as natural fertilizer in the plantations. People here are more uh, doing agriculture, and people up in the mountains, they are more herders, they have more goats and sheep. They bring them the foods, and the others bring the meat and uh, also the manure. Because of this trade-off and this is close loop between these uh, two groups, these oases were survived and sustained all the harsh conditions. In this remote desert region, the trading between farmers and herders has meant the oases have always had healthy and fertile soil. These wonderful gardens attract many insects. And the Falage tunnels provide shelter to reptiles and amphibians. All of this wildlife has taken advantage of these man-made ecosystems. But it is not alone. The oasis terraces are also home to many wildflowers. For 25 years, Annette Patzelt and her colleagues have roamed the Omani mountain range, identifying the plant life growing around the oasis gardens. Jebel Akhtar has one of the biggest varieties of wildflowers in Oman. Opportunistic species that have taken hold in the oasis. As well as the cultivated plants, there's also an incredible amount of wild herbs, especially in the herbaceous strata under the cultivated trees and shrubs. It's humid, there's shade and more water. In the desert, it wouldn't be possible. You don't find these plants here. But here, in this man-made environment, it's a bit like an island in the desert. So, let's check the, the walls and see what we can find. During their field studies, the scientists have identified many wild species in the gardens and in the cracks in the walls supporting the terraces. There are almost 100 species, so a great variety of plants. And it's because for centuries no pesticides or other chemical products were used. Quite the reverse was true. These terraces were cultivated in a very ordinary, very traditional way. And here at altitude, we find a fair amount of plants, such as this grey field speedwell. It has pretty blue flowers, but it's a bit late in the year for flowers. You can already see the fruit. And this plant is only found here, in northern Oman, in these oases. Saif Alatmi and Abdurrahman Ali Nai work for the Oman Botanic Gardens. These ethnobotanists have identified some 30 medicinal plants used by the locals to treat stomachache, fever, and skin conditions. Some of these plants are also used to treat animals. This plant here, it is, uh, belongs to the Solanaceae family. It's called the Tora Mittel, that's the scientific name. And uh, the common name is uh, uh, Devil's Trump. So Devil's Trump, it's uh, related to the, uh, the shape of the, uh, of the flowers. Why is Devil's? Because it causes hallucination. So the plant is used uh, for treating uh, animals. Like for instance, if uh, people, they saw their animals like they are refusing to eat and they were losing weight. So they're using the fruit when it's ripe. That's improving their appetite and it starts to eat more. So the oases cure people and animals as well as nourishing them. 
These rich ecosystems are evidence of the skills of Jebel Akdas farmers. But this traditional form of agriculture is under threat. 